Let's talk about a difficult concept, the Gaia hypothesis, or um, some people would prefer that it's called a theory now at this point. James Lovelock was working for NASA and coming up with a method to see if there was life on other planets by looking at them through a telescope instead of traveling there, much more cost effective, and using the light coming from the planet to then estimate what the atmosphere was made of. So in his moment of insight, he realized that he could use what it would look like to look at the Earth from space as a model for what light frequencies might be reflected off of an atmosphere of a planet that had an atmosphere capable of sustaining life. What he realized then was that the gases in the atmosphere that reflect the light coming, come from living things. That living things aren't just in the atmosphere, but that they help maintain the levels of gases in the atmosphere, so they're helping to maintain the Earth as well. So he had this idea of the Gaia hypothesis, that the Earth behaves like a living thing, in that it maintains its own homeostasis, mostly keeping its temperature constant or relatively constant. He wasn't saying it was a living organism, as it isn't self-replicating, but what it exhibit but it exhibits the same characteristics of maintaining itself and its own temperature like living things do. And he proposed that the living things and the physical earth are in collaboration with each other. But what came first and, and what is the driving force? Well this is kind of a chicken and egg question to some degree. The earth was certainly here, um, physically and, and geologically active before life. And the geology was um, very active early on. Volcanoes were erupting, meteors were striking the surface and putting gases and dust into the atmosphere and so on. And this certainly had an effect on the composition of the atmosphere. And it's common to think then the, the Earth came geologically first and then after the Earth was physically formed and all set and ready, life could appear and evolve on the planet. But of course we know that life itself, instead of just responding and evolving on the planet, is actually participating in the evolution of the physical planet as well, and the uh, makeup of the atmosphere. So Lovelock came along and proposed that in actuality, these two things are working together in concert with one another, the, the living systems and the geological systems to maintain the atmosphere. So let's consider a very simplified carbon cycle. The rabbit breathes out carbon dioxide, and the plant breathes that in, and then releases oxygen. These two kinds of organisms participate in a cycle that maintains CO2 and oxygen levels in the atmosphere. But that's not all. The animal is also breathing out water that ends up in the atmosphere. And eventually, that water rains back down and is absorbed by the plant which passes the water on to the animal that eats it. Not only are the plants and the animals connected to each other, they are interconnected within the atmosphere and with the atmosphere. As the earth gets covered with plants and ice, these are reflective surfaces, and so they cool the planet. And life responds by evolving species that can survive in cooler climates and cooler temperatures. If the amount of plants reduced, for example, or the amount of reflective ice changes, or CO2 is added to the atmosphere, this can cause more heat to be absorbed, and that raises the temperature a bit, which might affect the life as well, which then affects the gases in the atmosphere, or the reflectivity of the planet itself, which might then again cause the temperature to lower a little bit. So the Earth is governed by this thermostat of, of living things, if you will, and that maintains the homeostasis. So we have this feedback loop. The temperature rises, which changes the kind of life on the planet, which then might lower the temperature slightly, just like shutting off the heat on a home furnace with a thermostat as the temperature rises. This allows the planet to maintain a narrow temperature range that supports life. And this creates then a negative feedback loop, because it's a negative feedback loop um, not meaning that it's bad, but meaning that as something goes in one direction positive, then it, the system responds by bringing it back to the center. And so we have this negative feedback loop allowing the Earth to maintain its own homeostasis through a complex interaction between the living Earth and the geologic Earth. 
and this is the Gaia hypothesis, or now maybe should be called the Gaia theory, as proposed by James Lovelock.